Hi, I'm Ryan Nichols, CTO of DSA, and today I want to show you how to make some basic hull components using features with rigid bodies. All right, so here's a blank Proteus project. I'm going to make a blank rigid body, and we're just going to open the visualizer window here to help us a little bit. So when we make a rigid body, it has no physical presence in space. You can see the world here, and that little soccer ball is the center of mass of the rigid body, and the global frame and the rigid body frame are aligned, but there's no physical hull present. So how do we do that? How do we give it some physical presence so that environmental effects of wind, current, and waves can start affecting the body? Well, there's a really easy way to get started with this in Proteus using the built-in parametrics. One of the most common ones that we use is called the cylinder feature. So we go to rigid body, click on feature, rigid body, cylinder. And we're just going to call this cylinder, cylinder help, create. Once we create, uh, it takes us to the library where we've got some fundamental parameters that we can change. I'm not going to change anything right now. First, I want to add the cylinder to my, my dummy blank rigid body that I've added here. So you can right click, insert property, fluid loading, and then cylinder. And you can see it's added the keyword here, cylinder. When we right click on that, we can use existing feature, cylinder hull. There's our default cylinder that's appeared. So now how do we orient and specify the location for this cylinder feature that I've, that, that I've just added? That's what these six numbers are. And this is totally fundamental to a lot of things in Proteus. It's all about reference frames. Okay, so there's always a, a, a cylinder frame associated with the cylinder and these six numbers specify how that cylinder frame has moved away from the rigid body frame and this first three numbers are the X Y Z displacement from the rigid body frame in terms of the local rigid body frame and then the roll pitch yaw Euler angle orientations so you can see if I put in a one meter offset in the Y direction, now the cylinder frames moved off a little bit from the rigid body frame. And then if we add a, a 45 degree pitch angle, it's pitched at about the Y axis. And then we can add as many of these components as we want, simply by copying and pasting or adding more, more lines. So now I'm going to make it with a negative offset, and you can see we have two cylinders. Now these are this is a rigid structure. What I want to do now is jump over to one of the tutorial input files. I'm not going to save this. Go over here. This is tutorial PDS ABE. If we open the visualizer, you can see we've got a very simple raft structure. You can find this online if you go to help and view tutorials open your website and what you want to look for is the multi mesh rigid body number 41 or PDS AB so there's the little structure that we're working with there's some more details explaining what the difference is and about the feature frames but what's really great about this example is that you can play around with the numbers on the raft and just get a feel for how things change so we have our two main pontoons and we have our struts I always like to show the water surface just as a reference point, there we are. And we've even got a little uh, little A-frame members there to make a miniature A-frame for the pontoon in the back. So try playing with these numbers. Let's make the pontoons a little bit further away from the main structure. You can even go into the pontoon if you right-click and go to feature definition. You can change the diameter. So we'll change this to 3 meter diameter and maybe we'll make it a little bit longer instead of 12. Uh, 10 to make it 12 meters long. There's hydrodynamic coefficients in there. The axial, radial, and angular segments, you can increase the resolution of the mesh a little bit. So I've just added some more segments there. Maybe we want a few more axial segments. We'll make this 15. We just added a bit more resolution. You can always do sensitivity studies to see how that changes the effect of the response. The main point is it's parametric, so you can build these structures up pretty quickly and pretty easily. And cylinders aren't the only things you can work with. You can work with parametric cuboids, ellipsoids, and a few other uh, kinds of shapes and, and things like that. But we'll get into those in another tutorial. Thanks for watching.